We're loading everything in the rig. We're supposed to be at a harvest host tomorrow. I think Museum of Clean in Pocatello, Idaho. But we went down a small hill today as we're coming back to load up and a light came on indicating that there's a wiring issue. There is no brakes in that rig. Just got back from Northern Idaho where we did the route of the Hiawatha and we saw all kinds of bike trails like the trails of the Coeur d'Alene. And uh, he hasn't stopped talking about e-bikes since then. If we had e-bikes, I would do it. If I had an e-bike, we saw a couple e-bikes. I keep talking about e-bikes, I want an e-bike. I've heard a lot about e-bikes lately. That's because I'm gonna talk her in e-bikes. <laughs> Not that we have e-bikes, but we were thinking if we wanted to bring e-bikes on here with e-bikes. Oh, and he, he was here like, whole trip is e -bikes. gonna get an e-bike. That's what, that's what it made me that's, want. And that's all you talked about, the whole, you know, he wants an e-bike. So we looked online and they're kind of booked out. You can't get them for like several months mm -hmm. and we're on our way up the glacier and we want to take bikes with us. So you really want to take them with us. We found a bike store down downtown Boise, our hometown local store. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna get some e-bikes. Next stops is kayak. Bikes delivered. No. Uh, oh, the receipts on the handlebar. <laughs> Are we gonna take it for a spin? Uh, I'm gonna go ride it. That was so cool. I just did my first e-bike ride. I had never even sat on one before. Ryan test drove both of them, and I just she totally trusted me. So we went down. I, I test drove, but she sat at the shop and didn't. And I just well, you know, I don't want anybody watching me. Anyway, it was a really cool first ride. We just kind of pulled it. We only went around the block, so it wasn't. Like we took a long ride, but it was really cool. What we're gonna have to do though, is I, I have a wimpy butt. They, these seats are, these are for, <laughs> we're gonna have to get the, the big, the big the seats. The grandma seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hit the first button and it just kicked in and it was just, just a little bit of a push, not much, just almost like something's just gently pushing your leg just a little bit, just pulling you along. The second one was even more, the third one was like rocket. I think I got up to about like 22 miles an hour. Easy, it was so easy. just after 8 a.m. We're supposed to be on the freeway heading toward Glacier National Park. We're not. We just dropped off the rig at Brett's RV in Boise. We picked it up yesterday from my sister's house. No trailer brakes. We had an error on the dash of the, of the truck saying trailer wiring fault. So I jumped underneath the trailer to see if I could find anything with the wiring issues. Everything appeared to be correct and what I could see. And then I checked the seven pin in the bed of the truck, checked the seven pin in the bumper, everything appeared to be correct. Jamie at Brett's RV somehow got us in, so we pulled the rig down this morning so that they could they could run through it and check it out. I also called the Ford dealership just to make sure it's not an issue with the truck again. I mean, we just lost the DEF pump. Hopefully it's not on this side. Let's hope that Brett's can find the problem on the rig because if it's on the Ford side, they said they can't get us in for two weeks. It's had a couple hours. He set off my description. He thinks that it's one of the wires in the hub are, are loose. So they're gonna have to tear off each wheel and see if they can find out which wire is loose. He said they got one in the bay right now and then they're gonna pull that one, they're gonna get done with that one, pull ours in the bay, start tearing off tires and maybe they'll get lucky and it'll be on the first one. Well, our rig's getting looked at, we decided to do a little shopping, maybe grab a couple more hiking items that are on my list but we got a call from Brett's. So he said they ripped off all the wheels and it was of course the last one, number six, and they they pulled it off, they found the shredded wire. These clips keep the wire up and out of the way. What had happened is this could come off and so this was sitting against the drum and it ran a hole through the wiring coating. Um, we were originally gonna do this, then we found that this was basically kind of Hanging out and falling apart, the keeper was missing, so we opted to replace the whole backing plate. So it's 11.30 right now. He said they should be done by one o'clock. We could pick up the rig. Sarah had to cancel the harvest hose for tonight. 
but it just means we're going to drive straight through to Butte for tomorrow. So it's going to be a long drive, but I think we can make it. We'll pick up the rig at one o'clock, take it home. We still haven't packed the thing. <laughs> we stopped packing it because it was like, well, we don't have brakes. What are we going to be able to do? But Brett's obviously the piss at the front of the line because we pulled in this morning and they put us right into a bay. So thank you, Brett's. Yes. Back to pick up our rig. And then we have a lot to do to get ready now that we're going to leave tomorrow. My brother's the engineer type. We're trying to figure out how to get the bike rack in here. You know, just kind of that one of those late night quick things. How to make the bikes stand. I'm just going to show you. So, so basically the bike racks in here, the bikes are strapped into it. And then my brother, Jimmy rigged a couple two by fours to kind of prop it in. And the bike rack is strapped in here. Like I said, not proud of it, but I am thankful he came over and helped me out and strapping it down. I was kind of frustrated with it. I'm trying to think of a way. Should have had a different approach. I think the whole loss of brake things kind of distracted me, and I, I'm just happy we're getting on the road. Super thankful for Brett's getting us in on such short notice. One of the things I did when I was dropping the rig off is this is the only the second time I've done this where you pull up, you unhitch, and I did not pull out the power. And of course, I had to do it in front of the two guys that were helping me. He said, have you checked the, your, your plugs? Because I saw you rip it out of your outlet today. I was like, you know, that's only the second time I've done it. And I told my wife, said, as soon as I set the truck, right? the second time and I did it right in front of me. Now that I understand trailer brakes a little bit better, I can understand how this is probably a pretty common issue. When it first happened, I was looking it up on the web and people were saying that it's probably the wire that comes from the truck back to the hubs or the wire that's actually in the hub. And so like I was telling you right out of the gate, after you told me, kind of explained what was going on, I'm like, that sounds like one of these wires had, had worked its way loose. If we couldn't get into our dealership, I would have started ripping off those tires so I could have figured it out. And I probably would have found the short just like they did. But this got us thinking. We were looking at going the disc brakes even prior to this. Now that I understand how they work, it seems like that the issues would be more common and maybe disc brakes would be the right way to go. Kayaks are secured, bikes are all locked in, Sarah's finishing up loading. Now we can get out of here to Glacier tomorrow morning. So that's where we'll see you. Glacier, see you next time.